Everyone knows Adriano for being the man that had 99 shot power on PES 6. Well, as someone who's been playing since 04, I am here to tell you that it was absolutely justified. This man was a titan who even had guys like Ibrahimovic in awe of his technical and physical prowess. You know you're a serious shooter when someone who considers himself to be the greatest human being to ever touch the earth is saying he could shoot from any angle, nobody could tackle him, nobody could take the ball, he was a pure animal. The same way I told you guys Batistuta used to bark it off at the speed of light, Adriano was in that realm. So how did he go from being heralded as R9's heir to sitting on the back of a motorbike in the favelas of Brazil? To be honest, it's actually a very sad story. Collect your pen and paper because it's time to learn about the man who has one hole in his ankle and another hole in his soul. Adriano Leite Ribeiro was born in one of the most infamous favelas in Rio de Janeiro, a dangerous environment that required serious mental fortitude just to survive. And yet, Adriano was unfazed by all the chaos around him. He spoke about how much he had fun just kicking ball barefoot in the streets compared to all the tap 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 on the screens kids do nowadays. This mentality took him from the favelas to Flamengo by the age of 7. It required the assistance of his entire family to add up all their savings to get him educated there. But his dad was so proud of him that he made it happen by force. Even at such a young age, he knew his goal was to make it as a professional footballer and bring all his friends and family with him. Unsurprisingly, he was promoted to the senior team by 16 and he didn't look out of place whatsoever. The same monstrous frame that had coaches worried about his transition into pro football was a weapon he'd used to his advantage, dashing guys to the ground like Prime Undertaker or Triple H before unleashing rockets that had goalkeepers frozen like Shikamaru's shadow possession jutsu. He scored his first senior goal in his second game against Sao Paulo, the first of nine goals in that 2000-2001 season that saw him become one of Brazil's youngest ever debutants. His stock was rising and by the time he scored another three goals at the start of the next season, Inter had already bookmarked him as the heir to R9. When I tell you about this guy's mentality, his debut for Inter is the perfect proof of what I mean. Inter went to play a friendly against Madrid at the historic Bernabeu, and when he was brought on as a second half substitute, he knew he wanted to make an impact. Inter were given a free kick on the edge of the box, and this guy told Seydorf to move out the way and let him cook. The audacity to chat to Seydorf like that can only be respected, but he absolutely backed it up, lashing it 105 miles per hour into the roof and net, past Ike Casillas of all keepers. It may have just been a friendly, but the trust that his teammates had in him was truly impressive. Unfortunately, the same could not be said for his coaches, who deemed him as still being too raw and sent him on loan to Fiorentina and then Parma on a permanent basis. Such a setback didn't affect him as he'd simply just carry on scoring goals and demonstrating his abilities in a league that at the time was still considered the best in the world. It was becoming increasingly apparent with each bullet of a strike that Inter had made a massive mistake letting this freak of nature leave their club. A mistake that would end up costing them 23 million as they re-signed him from Parma after a solid 23 goals in 37 games for the club. Adriano told everyone that he was happy to return home upon his announcement in January 2004 and this guy just picked up where he left off for the rest of the season. Nine goals in the second half of that season with a devastating double against Empoli on the final day were a sign of things to come. Backing off his shot like that in front of the fans had the entire stadium realising that they were witnessing something special. As such, he was given the nickname Emperor of Milan. While others may crumble under such pressure, he embraced it, finally forcing his way into Brazil's national squad for the 2004 Copa America. With many of the big guns given time off after their 2002 World Cup exploits, Adriano showed that he had some heavy artillery of his own. His group stage highlight was a stunning hat-trick against Costa Rica to help them cruise into the semi-finals. A brace against a strong Mexico side set up a semi-final against Uruguay, where he'd score yet again in a 1-1 draw and then convert his penalty in the shootout. The final was against historic rivals Argentina, and as a script would have it, they'd be 2-1 down in the 87th minute before the Emperor arrived with a late dagger to equalise and take it to penalties. He'd scored the first pen as Brazil won 4-2 in the shootout to lift the trophy. He was fighting back tears as he explained that it was the greatest moment of his career, but sadly, this elation only lasted 9 days. Upon his arrival back in Milan, as he proudly showed everyone his medal that he had worked so hard to achieve, he received a phone call that would change his life. His father had passed away from a heart attack. Adriano's biggest idol and inspiration was gone, and with that, so was his love for football. Zanetti spoke of the harrowing screams he heard whilst he was in the room, and he took it upon himself alongside Cordoba to look after Adriano as a little brother. For a while, it seemed to motivate him even more, as he actually had his best ever goal scoring season with 28 goals in all comps, dedicating every goal of a celebration to his father, the man who helped him achieve his dreams. He had the love of the entire fan base and yet felt completely alone so far from home. He tried to drink himself out of this depression, but it just led to constant fluctuations in his weight, and as a result, a string of little injuries back to back that prevented him from even training. At this point, he just wanted to go home. 
His ability to rifle shots from all distances allowed Inter to pick up yet another Coppa Italia as well as a first league title since 1989, albeit in controversial fashion after the first and second place Juve and Milan were booted out for that match fixing scandal. This was just papering over the cracks. In the 2005-2006 season, he scored another 19 goals in 47 games across all competitions to secure a spot in Brazil's 06 World Cup squad. During that era, Brazil was stacked with superstars and despite a goal against Australia, he just couldn't fully break in over an aging R9. Ronaldo slapped a brace against Japan before an iconic goal against my country Ghana, although Adriano also scored in that game too. They'd go on to meet France in what is now known as the iconic Zidane game that sent them packing from an underwhelming tournament. This was the first time that his indomitable mentality could be called into question. At Inter, new manager Mancini seemed to prefer Ibrahimovic and Crespo over Adriano and he was struggling to find the motivation to show up and fight for his place at club and country. His drinking got worse and he was now being seen at more nightclubs than training sessions. In November 2007, Adriano was given a year and a half unpaid leave to go back to Brazil and try and recover mentally and physically. A nice loan at Sao Paulo saw him score 11 goals in 19 games, but more disciplinary issues followed him and they decided that it would be better for everyone involved if he were to return to Milan. Mourinho was now the guy in charge and in true Jose fashion, he made it abundantly clear that the team is bigger than Adriano and nobody could tell him when he can and cannot play. He still continued banging in goals with his limited minutes but it just wasn't the same. No amount of goals could make up for the lack of discipline in Jose's eyes and his contract was terminated. He returned back home to Flamengo in May 2009 to a hero's welcome as the stadiums were packed out to witness this special talent once again. Of course he'd score in his debut and continue hammering in goals to fire them to their first league title in 17 years, picking up the top scorer award in the process. Behind closed doors there were still issues though, including being interviewed by police with regards to his link to famous drug traffickers. These situations became untenable and Flamengo were unable to suppress the media bombardment. It was time to close the Flamengo chapter. Roma picked him up on a free transfer in 2010 as he aimed to reignite his European adventure and prove to everyone that he had matured now. Unfortunately, I have no goals to show you because he didn't score a single one. Ranieri was livid with how overweight he was when he arrived and he just could not stop the constant injuries from piling up. He'd start missing training sessions again and despite all his apologies, he was released. Adriano returned home to Brazil, having second and third chances at various different Brazilian clubs from Corinthians to Flamengo once again and lastly Atletico Paranense, leaving each club with just the one solitary goal. He closed his career out with Miami United in 2016 before retiring at the age of 34. Deep down, everyone knew that he had retired a decade earlier. In fact, he kind of knew it himself, saying that when he popped his Achilles in 2011, that was just the last straw. He had a massive hole in his ankle and an even more painful one in his soul. But listen, to score 27 goals for the Brazilian national team means he's way more than just a cult hero. But unfortunately, we will never get to know just how far he could have gone were it not for those tragic incidents. The Emperor is still loved by many and if his main goal was to make his dad proud, he certainly did that. I'll let you guys decide where you think he'd rank in today's day and age. Whether you've watched Adriano a lot or not at all, I hope you've learned something new today. If you did, please leave a like on the video, comment what players you want to see next and subscribe for new lessons every Monday. Class dismissed.